space travel is by definition not grounded, but for a show about exploring other planets, for all mankind is surprisingly down to earth. Joining us from the Apple TV Plus original, please welcome Joel Kinnaman, Cynthia Wu, Matt Walpert, and Ben Nadivi. Hey guys, thank you so much Hi. for coming. We appreciate it. Pleasure to be here. So, Joel, your character Ed, we have seen him across many decades at this point. Yep. What is it like to age a character up like that? And to, I mean, he, you kind of play him old at this point in a way. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the big treats of this show to, to get to play a character you know, over the ages. And, and it's like, when you jump 10 years, uh, I've been, I'm, I've done so many interviews saying the same thing, they, they're so tired of hearing it, but uh, you know, there's a lot of literature that supports that uh, after 10 years, we basically become a different person. Our personalities change so much the way we view the world and, and the people around us. So it's, uh, I mean, it definitely keeps you on your toes. Uh, every time you come back to this character, you know, there's a core that is there that is the same, but, you know, the physicality starts to slightly change and also the outlook on the world. So, I mean, it's uh, it's very exciting. Sure, sure. Cynthia, your character has sort of stepped out of her parents' shadow in a way and really forged her own path as the season has progressed. And then we see her and dad kind of, you know, getting together in a way. Uh, is it important for her to make mistakes as a character? I think, you. yes, you guys have seen a few episodes. I'm not giving anything away, but yeah, there were a couple of just very human things that Kelly did, um, naturally being a human up in Mars and then a uh, confined environment for a long duration of time. <laughs> and yeah, she does a couple things that um, there are gonna be consequences and we just don't know what those consequences are yet. And also, I mean, the whole first year we worked with Cynthia, she was lying to us. <laughs> On Listen, set, like to be Amy and Chantel who played her at first. Okay, it's not my fault she, you guys look so young, okay? It's not my fault. She pretended to be much younger than she was. She was like, <laughs> hi, Joel. Like, and, then, and then when we start I'm a shooting, pretender. We, sh we start shooting the third season, it's like, wait, who who are you? Like, you're you're a mature woman. <laughs> like, you're a real woman. You went to I mean, summer camp and you grew up yes, while you were there. Yes, I sh there was actually a softball photo we used on set. I know. And then you and Chantal were like, oh, that's so cute. You pulled that from like home. I was like, I shot that last week. <laughs> and I looked like 12. Yeah. She's okay. actually she's actually 72, right? You're like I'm 70, 72. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah so. spoiler. Well, that'll come in handy in future seasons. Yes, yes. Sure. yes. Season eight will be great. <laughs> so Matt and Ben, like how far can you take these characters? Right? We know you sort of jump a decade at a time. Uh, like, you know, is is the end in sight for Ed at some point? Hmm, let's think about that. <laughs> depends the... on how Joel answers the next couple of questions. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I do have a couple other offers that I'm really looking at, so, uh, you know, so it might go real bad. No, I mean, the, you know, the nature of the show is that every season, you know, we require acting. It's not a normal show where you have these beautiful actors and you try to make them look more beautiful. Like, we're going the other way. We're like, how can we gray you up with some wrinkles every season, add some weight? So it's tricky and it asks a lot of the actors and for the most part, they really step up and embrace it. Um, but yeah, there is a certain, you know, every season we have the greatest makeup team, hair team. They kind of go with it as well. And I think part of the unique nature of this show is that we're showing, it's not just showing someone's a part of someone's life, you're showing their entire life. Yeah. And I think especially with these two characters, we're talking like 20, 30, 40 years of their lives. So it's such a cool uh, thing to be able to tell that kind of story. And I think the audience will go with it, you know? Yeah, totally. The, the, the show does a great job of showing us many different ways that you can die in outer space, right? And it's, of course, the show is so grounded that it, you know, it's like, oh, that actually would happen, I think, you know? Yeah. But have there been any examples of that where you kind of have thought, oh, maybe that's a little too crazy or we shouldn't? We definitely have like a crazy scale of things we've done. On our, we've done a lot of crazy things on our show. Just like Sally Ride pulling a gun in a spaceship is like insane. Yeah. So I think we've shown that that no idea is too crazy as long as you ground it in science and ground it in the character. You know, that's that's. But we always start in the writers room from like what's the craziest stuff we can come up with. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so the show does. Um, again, it's so grounded. But like as we get further into this alternate sort of reality uh, does it give you guys more room to play with science fiction concepts for sure it, it uh, you know the more we go the more uh, uh, far afield from reality it becomes but it's also important to us to really make sure that it is rooted in technology and science that's possible you know so um, 
we are on the road to Star Trek on a certain level. You know, yeah. I think some of the, uh, even some of the designs you see in the, like the Phoenix flight deck has that sort of nod to that. Uh, so we're headed that way, but it's also, you know, very important to us to keep a, a foot in reality and, and that time that these shows take place in. Yeah, definitely. I, I, one of the things I love about the show too is the way you guys play with pop culture concepts and how, like, like John Lennon's still alive in, in your world. Yeah. You know, like, are there, are, is there a thematic through line on any of those? Like, is there, are you trying to comment on, on anything with what you include, or are they more just kind of Easter eggs? I think it's both. I think um, some of them are just stuff we, we were hoping would continue, like John Lennon living and the yeah. Beatles reuniting. But a lot of it more and more as the show gets further into the alt history, you'll notice that it's not just clips of news, it's also like how our world is becoming more and more a part of the reality of the of history. So you'll see more of our characters in those news clips and more things like that. And I think that's what's been an interesting thing to see is the space race continuing in that way, how it would change history. You notice more and more with each opening montage. Yeah, totally. Uh, so Joel, Ed and Karen, is there a chance that they, they could get back together at some point? We'll see. I mean, yeah doesn't look too There's good. always hoping. <laughs> there is. But maybe. Yeah. I mean, they are each other's life partners, so, you know, there's definitely a chance. Okay. All right. Well, here's hoping. Fingers crossed. Yeah. I tell you, my wife is really hoping for that. Uh, she can't wait. She loves the show. I love the show as well. So she's like, when are the screeners coming of the show? <laughs> so, so great to talk to you guys. Yeah, you too. Thank for you. All Mankind's third season is rapidly approaching its finale, and you can find out all of it exclusively on Apple TV+. Right now, there's more San Diego Comic-Con right here on IGN. Thanks for watching.